felt like the nine to five just isn't for you? Have you ever just like dreamt of like packing everything up and setting off for life on the road? If you have, I have an amazing thing for you called fan life. And it's, oh, you have children. Oh, well, that's okay. How many? Seven. That's fine. We can put them in a shelf and mommy can live her influencer dreams. Let's get into it. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another internet adventure. Today we are going to be discussing the ethics of van life when you have children. And we are going to be discussing the sleeping situation, how it would feel as a child, and whether or not these parents are super duper entitled. Now, I used to be a van lifer and I just recently quit, so you may think that I am pretty positive about this, but there's a few things that we really need to discuss, so let's get into it. Van life families are a subculture of the family vlogging genre. Personally, I've never really understood the whole appeal around it, but people are very curious, especially when you're living in maybe a small space or something quite unique. Like if you've got 12 children, a lot of people are very curious as to what you like to eat. And when you live in a bus with seven children, or 20 of them, however many you have. People are also very curious about the sleeping situation. Usually the parents will have their own room. They'll have like this big queen size or maybe even king size bed. And then the children seem to have like a shelf. It's kind of a miniaturized version of a bunk bed. And they pretty much just stuff them wherever they can. Some kids aren't even lucky enough to get a bunk bed and they just get the floor. Here's where Enoch sleeps. So it's a really interesting ethical dilemma that people have because one part you kind of go, okay, well, if they're only traveling temporarily, then if it's a temporary thing, it's not a bad thing. And for me, when I was doing van life, I did it as a part-timer. I didn't do it full time. And that was part of the reason why I like showing it off because it was kind of just showing, hey, you might not love camping, but you might like van life and you can just do it occasionally, you can do it on weekends, you don't need to go full blown into it and just commit. You know, if it was only that, people probably have no issues with it. But the thing is, is that these families are committing to the bit and they're going all in. And the question then becomes, what's the efficacy around, is efficacy a word? I'm not too sure. What is the eth efficacy around <laughs> around these children sleeping on the floor and these odd sleeping situations. Here we ended up doing triple bunks for the boys, which I'm so glad we did. They're super awesome. This folds down to make it easy for them to climb in. Latches so they won't fall out. Have our kitchenette area with a little fridge. All of our uh, yep, that's a shelf and three children. Cool. So this door doubles as both a space divider, but also the door to our closet and the doorway to our son's bedroom. We determined that he could have an entrance that was both out of the way, but also big enough for him to fit through. He is 6'1", and the bunks upstairs are six foot. He has a much bigger space where he can actually stretch out as he grows. So far, it's been awesome. He loves it, and all the other kids are vying for that space when he moves out. That's four kids and poor Sam is not looking very comfortable in there. At least he has a pet snake for company. I don't know how I feel about this one. I like the fact that he has his own personal space, but again, he's a growing boy and I feel like that would be quite a cramped space for a boy to kind of like move in. He looks quite tall, like maybe if it was someone more petite or smaller, it would be okay, but he looks like he's almost edging on six feet and, you know, he's literally in the little baggage holder area with his pet snake. I don't, I, uh, moving on. We're a family of four. We live and travel full time in this RV. Come check out where my brother and I sleep. Our bunk beds are right behind these doors. The top bunk is mine. We have a storage area at the back for all our books, toys, stuffed animals, and personal things. Then the bottom bunk is my brother's. Hit follow for more RV life. Thanks for stopping by. Good night, sweetie. I'll see you in the morning. Wait, mom, can you please leave the cupboard open? <sighs> yeah, it's a bit tight in here. 
Now I need to be completely honest. I actually loved the idea of this when I was younger. I thought it was the best way to raise your child and you know, it was the best way to be a parent as well because you got to travel the entire time while also giving these kids amazing experiences that many of their peers would never experience, especially at that age. And there's a few reasons as to why this appealed to me. Number one, of course, I loved to travel and I found there was a lot of value about learning about culture from a young, young age. And I wanted to instill that into my own kids. Number two, I also felt like the education system for me didn't really work. And if my one day kids are anything like myself, I kind of felt like I could provide something better by giving them this type of lifestyle. Now, of course, I've grown, I've also experienced van life. And now that I have experienced it, I don't really think it is something suitable long term. I think, you know, if it is like, you know, the stereotypical way of going and traveling for the summer and then coming back home, I think that's okay. And I think that is really, really valuable. But when you're doing it the entire time, there's a few things that I noted while I was doing my own van travels that just made it not something that you could do forever. Now, some of the reasons as to why that was, was because when I did van life, I found that I uprooted everything, including all of my general habits and even bare necessities. And sometimes it would get very stressful trying to search for those things. Now, admittedly, I did do very, very low budget van life. So of course, when you're looking at these van life parents and they have like, you know, the full kit and caboodle in terms of like the sink, the shower, the toilet, the I don't know, jacuzzi in the back. Obviously there are things that kind of ease because they've already got some of those bare necessities. But at the same point in time, you're always constantly looking for locations. You can't always stay somewhere long-term. And especially when it comes to a child, they need to be making friends and developing those friendships and relationships. And when you're moving all the time, they only get to very surface level sort of friendships. They may have a lot of friends, but I can't imagine those friendships being very deep because as soon as they make a friend, they're already moving on. I just didn't find that this was a very sustainable thing for a family. I loved the idea of doing this as a solo person, even better as a couple, I really enjoyed that. But with what these people are portraying, it's really not as it seems. And even just going by myself without having another person there, I was getting frustrated with myself. Imagine having three children as well. I would, I would get very frustrated <laughs> very easily. And for these parents to kind of be like, oh no, everything's peachy, everything's perfect. It's just, it's not true. It really isn't. And I was severely humbled when I did it myself. And I know that this isn't really something that is sustainable. And, and mind you, I'm not saying that, you know, homeschooling or unschooling is necessarily a bad thing either. I just think with children, they do need to have like a set routine. They do need to have a space that they can call their home and that they can feel safe. And when you're constantly moving and they have no privacy, it's just not going to happen. And I would love to say that this would work and maybe from the age of zero to three, maybe it could, but anything after that, kids really need to learn how to socialize and earlier on the better as well. We sleep in the trailer. This is where the little girls sleep. It used to be a table but it converts into a bed. Here's the couch and Noah's sleeping on it. Here's where Enoch sleeps. Here's Elijah. He has a top bunk. And down here are Pearl and Naomi. Here's where Josiah sleeps. This is where Moses sleeps. And this is where mommy and daddy sleep. Yeah, you can tell who's the favorite children in that one, can't you? That family has 10 kids. And funnily enough, they actually got enough backlash from that video that they ended up getting an apartment. So let's have a look at their sleeping situation now. How we sleep in our New York City apartment. This is where the big boys sleep, Elijah and Josiah. This is where the little girls sleep, Melody and Anna. 
and Chloe. This is where Enoch and Noah sleep. This is where the big girls sleep. Pearl and Naomi. This is where mommy and daddy sleep. This is where Moses sleeps. This is where the Legos sleep. Well, at least Enoch has a bed now. That makes me a little bit happier. The Lego has a room of its own though. I don't know how I feel about that one. To be the devil's advocate here though, I remember my grandmother telling me stories about how many people would live in like a two bedroom apartment back in her day. And she'd be like, yeah, there was like six or eight people. So, you know, maybe these days we are so spoilt for choice and space. Maybe we're not used to seeing this. And if this family wasn't very well off, you could definitely give them a little bit of lax. But I think considering all these children know how to play like the trombone and stuff, I would like to argue that they are probably better off than we think they are. So for a family of 12, 20, however many it is, you'd kind of think that they would have a full house. Um, I do think it's better they've obviously upgraded from that giant bus because even a giant bus like that was not enough for that many kids. Uh, especially those young ones, like I know that they don't need a room for themselves, but having a space to call your own, I think is very important. I don't know the psychology behind that, but it's certainly a discussion for another time. All right, everyone wants to know where do the kids sleep in this RV? The kids have custom triple bunks right here where they each have privacy curtains and they also get to decorate all of their own space with LED lights, decor, their own personal fans, teddy bears, because each kid has their own personality. And where do we sleep? Let me show you. Yes, me and Jimmy sleep on this pullout couch. It is super duper comfy, as you can tell. One thing I think we can all agree on is that these kids have literally no access to privacy. And I'm a little bit concerned as to how these kids would be sleeping because sleep is obviously a huge part of your life. And it's probably one of the most uh, developmental parts of your life, especially as a child. Now, when I was traveling, I really struggled with sleep for a couple of reasons. I had a full mattress, unlike these poor children, but I felt that because I was like in a little tin can pretty much, and I was always moving around, I didn't know what was outside. So it was really hard for me to relax and go to sleep. And I was by myself. Imagine if you had six other siblings, like literally under the bunks next to you, and one of them's just like, you know, listening to TikTok, and then another one's trying to sing themselves a lullaby. Like you're just gonna have all this different noises that I feel like you, if you do get sleep, it would be very light sleep. And that's not what you want, especially when your child's developing. I love the idea of these people going for a temporary or short term sort of travel. I think it's a great idea for travel. I really loved how I did van life. It showed me a lot of my own country. I gained a lot of appreciation for it. And I got to meet a lot of really interesting people. But in saying that, I do think, especially for a child, this should be a temporary thing. It should be something you do for the summer for fun. It should not be an all day, every day sort of thing. But let me know what you guys think, because I think, you know, there's a lot of different aspects going on here. Number one, most of these kids are doing homeschooling. So let's say if they were unfortunately getting abused, they can't really speak to anyone. There's no going to school and letting a teacher know, hey, this is what's happening at home. There's no going to the authorities because you don't even know where the authorities are because you're always on the move. If they don't have an access to a mobile device, it really does give a recipe for potential child abuse. And it makes it a lot easier for the abusers to keep it under wraps and not let anyone know. It really does start making you question, okay, how much should a child be online? And how much should you be talking about their life as well? Some of these parents are very descriptive about their children's lives. And personally, I don't agree with that. I don't like the idea of like blasting your child's entire life onto 
social media for everyone to see forever. I would much prefer to keep a lot of things private, but I know that a lot of people find a lot of um, understanding with it and they can relate it to their own children. And I think that might be why family vlogging channels are so popular because parents can look at it and be like, oh yeah, Timmy did that last week as well. But I don't know, it's a very ethically heavy discussion for sure. Are these parents entitled? I think this is the final thing that we're going to be discussing here. And honestly, I think they are. I really do. Because when it comes down to your child, obviously there's a lot of ways that a child can learn and a child can live. I'm not saying that there isn't a way to do van life potentially that would be beneficial for children. But in saying that, there are a lot of things that a parent needs to take into consideration that I really don't feel like a lot of these parents are. You know, if you do want to do van life, especially as a parent and you have children, I think there's a few key things you need to think about. Number one, how long are you going for? Number two, how old are your children? Do they need their space? Because as soon as they hit teenagehood, I really do think that they need to like spread their wings have their own space and develop as a person. They can't just be coddled by mum all the time. The spaces that they get given, they get a given a curtain and they get to choose what color it is. Like it's just, it's not enough. If you want to do something like this, I would almost argue that you need to have two vans, one for the children, one for you. <laughs> so then they can have their own space. They can get away from you. They can get away from their siblings as well and just have a bit of space because the thing is, is that like, yes, of course we want to be around. We want to, you know, see our children developing and see them enjoying their time. But the thing is, is that sometimes they do need their own space to do their own things. And I would like to argue as well, mommy and daddy needs to do that as well. Sometimes we need to have our own space, if you know what I mean. And I just don't see how that is really truly feasible under a full-time van life sort of lifestyle. But let me know what you guys think in the comments because I am very curious as to what other people and other van lifers think. Personally, I just don't think it's very ethical for a child. And I think there would have to be very specific circumstances for it to be borderline. But let me know in the comments below and I will see you on our next internet adventure.